Good morning. Uh, you're very welcome to this, the, the latest uh, VSG webinar in, in the series. This one is entitled the Digital VSG, new brand, new publication, and most importantly, new website. Um, so my name is Chris Scott. I work for Outdoor Recreation Northern Ireland. Um, we, we provide the secretariat services for, for the VSG. Um, we're delighted again to have great support for this for this webinar. There's been great support to the series of webinars we've been running since since March, April. Um, we have 65 registered today from all across the, the, the UK and Ireland, and I can slowly see you coming online there now at, at, at the moment. This webinar, like like all the others, though, is, is being recorded, um, so it'll be available on the, the YouTube channel either later today or, or, or tomorrow. Um, that'll be just, the link to that will be distributed to you via easing, uh, along with other output puts from, from this webinar. So you can share that with your, your colleagues who can take time to, to watch, watch that back if they're otherwise engaged today. Um, today is, is great. It's somewhat of a somewhat of a celebration. Um, as widely reported in the media yesterday, it was the most depressing day of the year, um, Blue Monday. So it's nice to move forward today with something to, to cheer about, hopefully. Um, obviously, 2020 was a, was a hectic year, to say the least, and, and 2021 is, is not showing any signs of, of easing up just yet. Um, so uh, today, it's, it's important that we move forward. Um, primarily, the purpose of today is, is to launch the new VSG web website, uh, more about that in a minute, and hopefully we'll really demonstrate the significant benefits um, that the website brings to you and the members of, of VSG. But it's also take time in the busyness of, of the last year or last or last 18 months, um, it's also useful to, to take time to recognise the evolution of, of VSG, um, the rebranding, uh, the revised publication, the Managing Visitor Safety and Countryside publication, um, and also a uh, 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 continuing growth in our in our membership. You know, we're delighted to say we we've 64 paid up member organisations at the moment, um, which is great. And even you know some of those new members that have come in over the last 12 months or so, like Blenheim Palace, the Marble Arch Caves Global Geopark, the Churches Conservation Trust, Cotswold National Landscape, Sport Northern Ireland via the Tullymore National Outdoor Centre, and the Cotswold Water Park Trust. I mean, even those names alone, I think, reflect the diversity and, and the geographic spread of our of our member organisations. So, so hopefully we can continue, and I'm confident actually we can continue that that evolution of, of growth of, of members as as we move forward. So I hope that's a brief introduction from me. You can see plenty of people have got themselves online, so you're you're all very welcome. Um, I, as I say, we have a. Uh, um, an agenda to work through now. So first of all, Ken Daw, who's, who's well known to you, is going to, before we look forward, it's important to sort of take stock and, and look about how VSG has evolved over the years. So Ken's going to give us the story so far. Then um, rather than Ken and, and I telling you the, the benefits of a VSG, we felt it was important that we brought some member testimonials in from across the various nations. So we have some members of the VSG have recorded short videos for us there as, as well. Um, Ken will then introduce the, the new website and my colleague Jane will, will give a brief overview and tutorial of some of the key parts of how you can make the most out of out of that website as we as we move forward. So I would say that all the videos or all the presentations today have been pre-recorded on, on videos. Um, but we're not Hollywood, um, so the, the sound quality in each varies. So I would encourage you to take a wee second now to if you're fans of Spinal Tap, to turn your speakers up to 11 and um, get your devices and laptops up to 11 um, so you can hear so you can hear everybody uh, loud, loud and clear. Of course, um, if any issues with volume, um, we'll be able, you'll be able to view it on, on the, the feedback or the, the view back on, on, on YouTube. So I'm going to uh, queue up um, Ken Dodd's uh, video. Ken's obviously been a, been, a, been a constant part of the group since, since day one and no better person to reflect on that evolution. So I'm going to queue up Ken's video now on the story so far. Hi everyone. I was really pleased when Chris gave me the uh, invitation to introduce uh, today's webinar, um, especially as it gave me an opportunity to reflect on the last 25 years and what makes the group so special. The, you can see here that I've put a, a subtitle to uh, the webinar um, to reflect the 25 years we've been together and really with the aspiration that as we go into a new brand, a new publication, a new website, a new era, 
uh, what we need to do to retain the values that make the group so special. I was looking actually at the um, the early notes of uh, of the group and thinking if we talk about a, a digital era now. Uh, when I first started working with the group employed by British Waterways, I used to go into the office, photocopy uh, all the agendas, the meeting notes, sent them out with snail mail in letters. Do you remember letters, envelopes and stamps? And it really was only in the first full year of the group, 1997, amazingly, uh, that the sort of organisations that are now or were members of the group then and um, actually embraced the modern era of the internet. And thank goodness we could send out information uh, as email, word documents and attachments. So the, the it's very common, isn't it, to talk about a group's journey over the years. But we really have this. The group has seen everything from the old post office service to the digital era that we're going to uh, explore uh, in in today's webinar. The group's original aims were to come up with some uh, form of advice and guidance for risk management uh, with respect to visitors to countryside. The, in those days, the only health and safety work uh, was being done for employees uh, and a lot of the principles that were being borrowed from workplace safety just weren't ap appropriate at all for our types of visitors of the countryside where they were actually actively seeking risk rather than trying to, trying to avoid it. So the original aim was to come up with some uh, types of principle uh, and way back, uh, I was looking at the notes back in, yeah, I've got them in front of me here, uh, 15th of May 1997 in York, the first real meeting of the group, uh, and the notes of it have a, a subheading guiding principles. And it's amazing that the words that we typed out then or came up with then, including things like no nasty surprises, uh, take account of conservation and environmental objectives. Those principles laid down for the very first time way back in May 1997 uh, have remained unchanged um, to this day. Uh, other parts of the notes from that meeting back in 97, we were discussing uh, what is acceptable risk for countryside recreation uh, and how do, do we uh, manage that contrast between uh, our visitors wanting risk for the, the benefits that it gave them. The second original aim of the group was to provide a, a, a focal point for those that were at the time interested in um, how we looked after our visitors. So that, that very first meeting had someone from the National Trust, British Waterways, Forestry Commission and the Environment Agency. And I see again from the notes of that meeting that there they was a discussion about who else we should invite. And English Nature, RSPV and English Heritage um, all, all got, <laughs> all got in, invitations then. And of course, in, in those days, the, the group was no more. It started with six and four. Uh, all the early years, in fact, up until 2011, the constitution actually didn't allow us to have more than 12 members. This was deliberately chosen so that we had every confidence in the group of people that were together. We respected each other's confidences. We could talk about um, things that had happened, knowing that we were in a, a safe space, as it were. Uh, and we were able to get things done. Um, but the, uh, over the years, I think the biggest, one of the biggest changes to the group was back in 2011 when we decided we, we really had to expand the membership and find ways of keeping the benefit of being a small tight group that could get things done, but also widen the representation. Uh, and in 2011, we did that. And in 2012, we decided that uh, the sort of principles that we were dealing with for the UK were equally ap 
applicable in Ireland. We actually did a review of the law in Ireland and to our, somewhat to our surprise, we found that the, the principles would be perfectly applicable uh, in Ireland. So in terms of what made the, makes the group successful, we, we really wanted to achieve a, uh, a wide representation, uh, which we've, we've now got, of course, once we, we, just, we took the brakes off from the numbers in 2011, we've risen to uh, the um, large number that we have now and, and successfully really covered all the areas of outdoor recreation that are key and important. So navigation authorities, rivers, canals, lakes and reservoirs, many water companies members, uh, several of the national parks, country parks, uh, forestry, woodland, nature reserves, all very well represented and uh, all the major owners, I think, of um, historic properties. So the, the breadth of the membership allows us to speak with confidence and gain information uh, widely through uh, the, our areas of interest and of course uh, throughout England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland uh, and Ireland itself. We wanted to come up with advice and guidance that would be accepted by the authorities as representing the, the best practice, good practice for, for our industry. That was important to us because at the time we felt that the application of the sort of risk management appropriate for factories and offices uh, was just not appropriate for our users in the countryside. And to do that, one of the critical factors was that we had to come up with that advice. It didn't exist. And that small group that I mentioned earlier actually sat down, um, argued, debated, came up with the guiding principles, uh, drafted advice, drafted good practice advice, um, eventually leading to um, running a workshop, inviting more and more people to join us and review the advice that we came up with. The first publication, I think, was 2003, and has been followed with uh, several revisions and upgrades. The application specifically of the same guiding principles to um, historic buildings, castles, uh, parks and, and so on. And then more recently, some specific advice and guidance on how COVID-19 was affecting us. You sh uh, the, the, the latest of our uh, big revisions was the a complete rewrite of the principles and practice booklet. And that was done um, uh, at a time when we were looking at the ensuring that the advice we came up with was recognised. And I'm delighted to say that the um, UK's health and safety executive has endorsed both our publications. It's um, quite a rare thing to get the full um, endorsement of HSE and we're able to print that endorsement in the books so that our members and anyone purchasing the publication um, is aware of the, the fact that, as it says here, the framework is consistent um, with the approach that HSE recommend. So we know that the purchasers of our publications, and we've now sold over 6,000 of the books, that's sold, many more have been distributed. And as you know, as members, you're entitled to a, a complimentary PDF electronic copies of, of all our publications. So the, the sale of so many of those publications means we know it's in not only in uh, the organisations that are members of the group, but also importantly through many government agencies, um, many universities and colleges, and also well over 100 uh, major consultancies and, and contract workers in uh, working in countryside and historic buildings have purchased the book. So we know that the principles have been widely distributed uh, and we, we know that um, because one of the conditions of membership of the group 
is that your organization is committed to managing using VSG principles. We, we can firmly say uh, that, that the guidance and management practices that we have are well embedded into uh, how to manage visitor recreation. The other original aim of the group was to uh, provide uh, a supportive forum so that people could feel um, they could talk in confidence and debate uh, problems, issues and ideas. Um, and the when we went to a bigger size group, we were very concerned about whether we would be able to retain that particular value and characteristic characteristic of the group. Um, we decided to go to a smaller nine man board who manage uh, the work in the group, uh, but it still very much harks back to those early 1997 days that the, the groups run by us, by the organisations that are members of the group. And every year, three uh, places are available for uh, anyone from the membership to participate in running the group by becoming a board member. So I would urge and encourage anyone that thinks they might be able to participate and help that way uh, to let us know. Uh, there are opportunities coming up now for uh, new members to join the board. The board a couple of years ago um, sat down and um, reviewed where we were going. Uh, could we retain that supportive forum as we grew and we believe that we could. Uh, we used an outside uh, agency, uh, uh, Andy Glidden, who helped us look at what our values were and how to take the business, the organisation forward. And we came up with our new name, shortened name, VSG, and our new identity, but very much keeping uh, to the traditions of the group where originally uh, British Waterways supplied the Secretariat, RSPB used to send out the booklets on our behalf. Uh, more recently, Outdoor Recreation Northern Ireland um, handled our finances. And as we got bigger, we entered into a formal contract for the next two or three years with Outdoor Recreation Northern Ireland for them to provide the sort of professional expertise and a bit more help um, because I needed some assistance, I couldn't manage it all on my own, uh, to keep supporting and servicing the needs of the group as our numbers have grown uh, through the wide range, providing a wide range of um, ways in which we could exchange information and support each other very much as a, a cooperative and a partnership type of organisation. So I hope you'll agree that uh, Orni have helped us improve the look and the professionalism of our e-zines and newsletters uh, to get information out to members. Um, they've also been magnificent in supporting the needs as the uh, workshops uh, grew. And of course, COVID has stopped us having our normal workshops for 18 months or, or so, uh, but we have, yeah, invested time, effort and energy in this series of webinars. And I think those will continue because it's a really good way that we can open up and share information uh, amongst the group uh, without the uh, carbon footprint of too much travel. Although personally, I'm looking forward to getting back to our workshops in the traditional way as well. And let's hope that uh, as the vaccine works, as we go into hopefully towards the end of this year at any rate, we may well be able to start to meet together um, again in our, our more traditional form of workshops. But we won't lose this type of webinar and even I might get more skilled at uh, presenting and uh, talking through Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Thank you very much for that, Ken. I say Ken has been a, been a constant in, in, in VSG o, 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 over the years and um, brought a huge amount to, to the organisation and is very understated in his presentation with, with his role there. Um, thanks, Ken, to the kind words for us. I think we're, we're quite new to the, to, the, to the network, to the overall organisation, um, but we've really enjoyed our, our past uh, sort of 14, 15 months in, in, in the role. Um, as Ken mentioned in his presentation, um, 
really the principles haven't changed very much if at all since the since since the outset and um, and really the overall strength of of, of VSG is its members as, as Ken said it is run by by its members and the information and the good practice is very much generated and shared by those members so so from that perspective we've asked today a number of, of members from across the various nations to kindly share um, a short video of their their organization their personal and their organization's involvement in VSG over the years and the value and benefit that that has brought to their organizations so so first up we have a, a short video from Adele from the wildfile and Wetlands Trust. So we're just going to cue that video now and hopefully it'll kick off a little bit quicker than the last one. Thanks for your patience. My name is Adele. Um, I'm the Head of Safety Management for the Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust. Uh, I'm sorry I can't talk to you directly from one of our beautiful wetlands sites. So I'm going to um, show you some videos while I'm talking. So uh, hopefully that will um, be a bit nicer than just uh, listening to me. So um, WWT was founded by Sir Peter Scott in 1946 uh, with the idea of bringing people and wildlife together and to engage and inspire uh, people to enjoy and take an interest in the natural world. Uh, some of our statistics, we have 10 wetland sites in the UK, uh, seven of which are in England. I'm going to be talking about our English sites today. Um, overall for WWT, we have 350 staff, around 1,000 headcount volunteers, 3,000 hectares of wetland habitat are managed by WWT. Um, we welcome 50,000 school children in a normal year to our sites and uh, we have over 200,000 um, WWT members who support our work in the UK and around the world as well. Um, and in normal times we have around a million visitors a year to our uh, 10 wetland sites. Um, our visitors are very diverse so we have a whole range from the, the hardy bird watchers and walkers to families, all age groups um, and large areas of our sites are accessible for example by wheelchair. Um, I also believe that we're the only VSG member to also be a licensed zoo, so seven out of our ten sites are licensed zoos. Um, if you look at the VSG risk control spectrum, uh, the level of risk uh, visitor skill is variable, uh, but it tends to be towards the lower end, so, so minor I would classify that as. Let me show you another video while I'm talking. <laughs> Go, who got a time lapse of some of our building going on. Um, so I describe our level of visitor skill as variable, but it tends to be towards the lower end. Um, I would describe our sites as moderately developed um, and our level of intervention uh, for risk management as moderate overall. But it, it does depend where you are on site uh, as a visitor, as the further you get away from the visitor centre, the wilder the landscape becomes. And so it attracts the more adventurous visitor um, the further away you go and therefore the level of intervention is lower as well. Um, I have worked for WWT for four years now uh, and we became a member just prior to my time, so about six years ago I think. So the benefits of being a VSG member, uh, there, are, there are many, I've tried to uh, note a few. Uh, it's a very diverse membership, but we've got the mutual aims, which is so helpful. A diverse range of topics are covered. Um, principles and risk control spectrum is adaptable to a wide variety of settings and variety of different topics. Um, I really feel that the support and experience of our peers and that sort of alignment with our peers is so important. Um, and also the fact that the approach that we use at VSG is supported by the health and safety executive. And this allows for a structured conversation, for example, when you're with your enforcing authorities. It's certainly aligned with our aims as an organisation, our strategic vision, and also provides consistency for the public um, as we all, we all take the same approach in how we manage uh, visitor safety. So an example of how I found the VSG principles to be useful is uh, water safety. So when I started at WWT four years ago, I was, I was new to this industry sector. I previously worked in the NHS uh, where we most definitely did not give people access to large bodies of water. 
So at our sites, we actively encourage people to interact with our water bodies to get our fundamental messages across and to educate. So, for example, stepping stones, splash play, um, canoe safaris, interactive water exhibits, pond dipping um, and hand feeding our birds at the water's edge. So when I started, I thought, well, how do we risk assess? Uh, by using VSG principles, of course. And I wanted to make sure that we were taking a sensible approach to, to managing the risk associated with our water bodies, but also taking into account that we don't want to detract from the visitor experience. We don't want to take away that feeling of freedom and, and relaxation and, and adventure at our sites. But I also don't want the site to be littered with fences, signs and, and rules. And something we talk about VSG uh, in VSG often is the no nasty surprises. So making sure that our, our hazards are, are obvious and using VSG principles, we mapped our water bodies. Um, this in turn allowed us to think what, if any, risk controls were needed, such as design of the water body that we want people to interact with. So a gentle slope, not a sharp drop. Um, how people access the water body, so clear and obvious hazard footpath routes, those kind of things. What were our expectations of our visitor behaviour and, for example, the children um, attending our sites? Did we need to use vegetation as a natural barrier, for example, if there was a risk identified? Information, signage, minimal, easy to understand, appropriate to the hazard. And only for the highest risk water bodies would be where we would want to discourage interaction, would we consider higher levels of risk control, maybe even fencing in, in serious cases. So I'm just going to show you this picture. Do, do, do. So this example on the screen is, is a quick reference map from one of our sites. So there's a number of documents which sit underneath it, but you can easily see here from the red, amber, green coloration, which are the low, medium and higher risk water bodies um, for the public. And I've used this example as this site is also a licensed zoo and subject to a very, very rigorous licensing regime, which includes a detailed health and safety inspection by the local authority. And when queried by the local authority as to our approach to water safety and the public interacting with our water bodies, we were able to use the documents we had written and how we use the VSG approach in order to satisfy them that we are correctly risk managing water safety on our site for our public. Uh, we can also use this approach when designing new areas and exhibits. You've just seen that video, a time lapse video of our, um, it's not open to the public yet actually, our, our lovely living wetland theatre at Slimbridge. Um, and starting from a VSG approach that allows me and colleagues to use this sort of structured approach at design and build stage. I hope you found this useful. Thank you all very much. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Adele. Great to see some uh, practical examples of how the, the principles have been utilised within within the various WWT sites there. And nice thing of a piece of mindfulness at the start there too. Great to see some outdoor space in this dank, dreary day in, in, in Belfast in those initial videos. Um, of course, Adele was a was a real leader within within VSG, particularly around the, the start of the response to, to, to the to the COVID pandemic. You know, as, as a member, uh, Adele was very proactive in setting up that, that peer response group. So again, a really good example of how members can can really add to the to the to the overall uh, network. Um, and of course, Adele was then co-opted as a board member during the year as well. Um, so um, we're going to pass on now uh, to the next video is from from Tom O'Keefe. Tom's from the State Claims Agency in, in Ireland. And of course, we have about um, 15 or so members, um, member organisations from Ireland, which is about 20 percent or so of our overall membership. So a significant membership from Ireland. So Tom's going to give us an overview um, from his perspective. Good morning. My name is Tom O'Keefe and I work with as a risk manager with the State Claims Agency in Ireland. I'm also secretary of the Irish uh, members group of the Visitor Safety Group and have been a member of the management board of the Visitor Safety Group since 2016. Established in 2002, the State Claims Agency manages claims and provides risk management advice for a large number of state authorities and government departments in Ireland. 
Among these authorities are some of the major visitor focused organisations in the country, including the national cultural institutions, the Office of Public Works, who manage uh, historic properties and, um, and historic sites, National Parks and Wildlife Service and Waterways Ireland. In our risk management role working with these organisations, it became evident that there was a need for risk management methodologies to facilitate safe access to visitors in ways that did not spoil the visitor experience or impact on sensitive sites or historic buildings. There was much discussion as to how this was to be achieved. And some Irish members had attended VSG meetings at that time. However, two fatalities at the World Heritage Site of Skellig Michael off the southwest coast provided the impetus to the Safe Claims Agency and a number of other groups to explore this issue further. Introductory talks were delivered by VSG in 2010 and 2011, and in 2013, the first Visitor Safety Group workshop was hosted in Ireland by the Office of Public Works in Castletown House, with the first Irish members joining the group formally and the formation of an Irish members group. From an initial number of six, there are now 16 members in the Irish group covering most visitor focused organisations in the Republic of Ireland, some cross border organisations, and our hosts today, Orney. Since the Irish members have hosted, a, since then, Irish members have hosted a visitor safety workshop once a year, and this has allowed Irish members to showcase risk initiatives which have worked well for them, and also to seek advice on issues that may be challenging. The Irish members also meet separately, which provides a forum for discussing and seeking solutions to distinct Irish issues, as well as keeping members up to speed with learnings from workshops held in the UK. There have been obvious benefits to membership in that time, but I would like to highlight the assistance provided by the Visitor Safety Group to the State Claims Agency and National Parks and Wildlife Service in the Wicklow Way case in 2016. In 2016, a worker successfully sued the National Parks and Wildlife Service in the Circuit Court after falling on a section of boardwalk on the Wicklow Way, one of Ireland's busiest waymark trails. Had this judgment been allowed to stand, it would have had negative implications for all landowners that allow visitors onto their property. This case was appealed to the Court of Appeal, the preparation for which was assisted by the Visitor Safety Group both as a group and by individual board members who provided advice and direct the defence team to relevant previous case law. The appeal was granted by the Court of Appeal and while the Visitor Safety Group was not specifically named by the judge, the judgment was entirely consistent with the Visitor Safety Group principles. This judgment was extremely important for all organisations involved in the visitor sector in Ireland. And while my organisation and the Irish members have benefited from membership in a variety of ways, the assistance provided in the preparation for this important case was very significant. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Another clear, clear example there. I mean that 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 wall versus the national park case, as you said, had had um, great scope to have massive ramifications and implications to, to outdoor recreation across the island of Ireland. One one we were watching closely. So you know it was um, it's it's pleasing to see the the impact and the input that VSG had um, to to that to that to that case. Okay, I feel a little bit like a Eurovision compare now. Um, we're, we're going to move from from Ireland across to across to Scotland, and a uh, John Ireland uh, from Forestry and Land Scotland has recorded a short video for us. Hi, I'm John Ireland. I work for uh, Forestry and Land Scotland as a safety, health, and well-being advisor. Uh, Forestry and Land Scotland was one of the kind of founding members of the uh, Visitor Safety Group. Uh, we were a different name then, we were Forestry Commission, Forest Enterprise, etc. Um, so as an organisation, uh, Forestry and Land Scotland manages some of the best places to visit in Scotland. Uh, we've got over 300 destinations, including six forest parks, you know, various mountains, lochs, riversides, water, beaches, 750 miles of waymarked trails. We look after kind of iconic sites like uh, Queen's View, Highland Persia, Glen Africa in the West Highlands. Uh, we've got like Seven Stains Mountain Bike Centre, um, but it's not all about like kind of rural areas and things as well. Um, we maintain a lot of urban woodlands, including Cunnagher Loop, uh, which is in the heart of Glasgow. Um, so, you know, it's Scotland's national forest. 
and land. We host around what, 10 million visits a year. Um, you know, we're Scotland's largest land manager. We, therefore, we're in a u position, unique position uh, with the kind of Land Reform Act and our kind of commitments to that. Well, you know, we actively work with communities that want to get more involved in their local forests, all that type of stuff. You know, so we're, we're busy. We're busy. We deal with a lot of people. Uh, you know, crowd control out in the countryside type stuff. Uh, maintaining walking and biking trails. You know, continuing to remove barriers. Uh, from so people from all backgrounds can access the forest, enable outdoor learning, encouraging schools, you know, facilitating renewable energy opportunities, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. So what's what's our kind of, uh, what do we get out of the visitor safety group? Well, I'll tell you what we get out of the visitor safety group. Well, what I personally get out of it and things as well as with the organisation is the, the, the gathering together of all sorts of different organisations that do kind of similar thing and the chance to kind of talk to each other about how we manage stuff and what we do and it's that it's like the old saying of uh, you know united we stand divided we fall if we kind of manage stuff in a similar way to other organizations doing a similar thing we're in a much stronger position that uh, you know when things push goes to shove and things go wrong and stuff like that if we're managing stuff in a similar way to how other organizations are doing it it puts us in a much stronger uh, position um, you know, morally, we want to look after people. Legally, we have to look after people. You know, financially, we want to look after people. If you think health and safety is expensive, try having an accident. And you don't need to kill many people to get yourself in the news and things there. So that's, you know, that kind of whole system, that kind of moral, legal, financial PR stuff. The visitor safety group stuff definitely helps us uh, in the way we think about stuff and the sort of balancing the risks and benefit of uh, how to manage uh, people in the countryside when the kind of Health and Safety at Work Act doesn't kind of like uh, really cope with that well. So how do you apply the Health and Safety at Work Act to managing loads of people out in the countryside getting up to all sorts of different stuff? That's where the Visitor Safety Group really kicks in and helps you kind of interpret that sort of stuff and apply it in a, you know, a balanced, sensible way. Okay, uh, thanks. Thanks very much, John. Um, united we stand, divided we fall. Maybe that should be our be our new catchphrase uh, moving forward. It sum, sums it up very well, I think. Um, so yeah, great overview uh, from from John there. Thank you very much, John. And again, somebody who, as he said in his video, gets a lot out of VSG, but certainly puts a lot in as well. I know. Uh, uh, well, our first uh, workshop that we delivered as Secretariat was in Northern Ireland about um, informal or natural mountain bike trails and John was certainly a great help and support to us in delivering that. Um, so the last video then from the Nations is uh, Dave Liddy um, from Natural Resource Wales. So I'm going to cue Dave's video now. I'm Dave Liddy and I'm Recreation Safety Advisor for Natural Resources Wales. I sit on the board of the Visitor Safety Group. Natural Resources Wales. 126,000 hectares of forest, 58 national nature reserves, five visitor centres, 38 mountain bike trails covering nearly 600 kilometres, 75 picnic sites and we believe we're visited by about 6 million people in any given year. Being a member of the visitor safety group is particularly valuable. That will give us a proportionate and sensible approach to managing visitor safety. That will enable us to balance the risks and the benefits. It's important to strike a balance between visitor self-reliance and the amount of management intervention. Now given that Natural Resources Wales is responsible for nearly 7% of the land area of Wales, clearly one thing, one size doesn't fit all and the Visitor Safety Group and its frameworks give us a rationale for managing visitor safety across all of our sites to give us that proportionate and sensible approach. I'm really keen on the value of special places and using the Visitor Safety Group framework will allow us not to put up a sign, not to spoil the special qualities uh, of any given place whilst at the same time managing visitor safety. Visitor Safety Group has got a commitment to promoting a sensible and proportionate approach to managing visitor safety in the countryside. 
The guidance provides a valuable framework for managing risks to visitors, being sensitive to the landscape and not putting restrictions on access. So at the end of the day, the Visitor Safety Group is certainly one of the most enjoyable parts uh, of my job. We get to share industry best practice, we get to manage and visit the countryside, uh, excellent series of workshops every year, webinars this year, uh, sharing industry best practice, meeting a lot of like-minded professionals with whom you can discuss a lot of very common threads. Uh, you know, everybody's got wild trail mountain bikes and illegal off-roading. Everybody's got cliff edges and water courses and wild swimmers are everywhere. And it's been really useful uh, over the years I've been uh, part of the Visitor Safety Group uh, to meet other organisations and their staff and to see how they deal with those kind of challenges. And then while we're away on those field visits, uh, there's always a bar, uh, there's always a nice meal, uh, and you get to meet a load of really great people. So what's not to like? The Visitor Safety Group. Thanks very much, uh, Dave. Um, summing up the the um, the benefits really well there. It was it was great, always great to see a uh, Cody Cody Brennan, and I uh, look forward to getting back there at some stage when when restrictions allow. Also good to see the the VSG pop ups there as well. I think they were originally designed for a for a physical a uh, workshop that would launch the VSG website. So good good, good to see them being a uh, good to see them being put to use. Uh, with 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 the video, um, so now we're going to move to the the launch of the, the website itself and um, the key part of this this webinar. Thank you to all those members for taking time to record their their videos and and, and send them in. I'm going to pass on a uh, briefly first of all to to Ken, um, who's going to provide an introduction to the launch of the website, and then we'll go straight to straight to um, straight to Jane, um, who is going to give us a little overview and a tutorial of some of the key features of the website. So first to Ken, and then straight to. Jane. In. Thanks, Ken. Well, the um, new look of, for the group and the new name for the group led to uh, a new logo. Uh, I see um, historic buildings and landscape and leaves. Other people say they see me, a grumpy old man, in that logo. Uh, but it seems to have gone down pretty well, and uh, group members seem to like like the new look. Of course, that has left us, did leave us with a website that was creaking, um, running rather unsteadily with the old look. And so it's been very important for us to uh, put the new the, the website into the into the new image of the group. But to me, more importantly, to take the opportunity uh, to make the website more responsive to uh, us, the users. And we've designed it on a new platform, WordPress. And although throughout this uh, webinar, people have said, oh, the principles haven't changed and the guidance is still solidly based from all those years ago. Unfortunately, the case studies and the information on the website is also based on information and studies from all those years ago. So what we've deliberately done is designed the site to work a bit like Wikipedia, so that the new case studies and the guidance um, can be improved, brought up to date and made alive for the benefit of members by enabling members to uh, give us uh, better photographs, more up to date examples, new case law or examples of how the case law has helped your organisation. And Jane has been beavering uh, behind the scenes to produce a framework so that when you following this webinar, go onto the site, look at it and think, oh, I've got a better photograph of that. Or, oh, yes, that case law was important to us in uh, saving us in uh, from a uh, claim against us. Let Jane know and we can put that up on the site so it becomes vibrant, it becomes uh, lively and used every day and right up to date. So it's our website and we need to use those techniques to make it vibrant and uh, valuable to all of us. Uh, Jane's going to show us how to do that, I hope. And when you see these things, let her know and she'll 
update the site so it becomes a reflection of the liveliness of the group going forward. Hi, my name is Tian, and I am on the BSC Secretariat with Chris and Elizabeth. So I've been working behind the scenes for the last few months during COVID um, to help develop and bring the new website to launch. I'm delighted to announce that we're at this point where we're able to show this to you and um, give you an exclusive first glimpse. The website is now live and you can find this via visitorsafety.group and this will come in your Google searches as well. This is the old VSD website, filled with fantastic content, exclusive member access, and I'm sure lots of you have used it on a regular basis, even more so perhaps during um, the latest pandemic. But things are looking different around here, and I'm delighted to present to you today the brand new website. It's colorful, it has pictures, but it, the main thing is it's packed of fantastic resources and content for our members. We hope that the new website will help you find easy access to the things that you need, um, whether it be case studies, um, whether it be topic guidance, whatever it is, we hope that you find the new website super easy to use. In this presentation today, I'd like to present to you um, the new website and give you just a whistle stop tour of some of the highlights. Welcome to the new Visitor Safety Group website. You can find this by searching for visitorsafety.group in your URL or else through Google search. You see that our new website looks very different, but we hope that the easy to navigate menus will help you find your way around the site quickly and easily. There's a menu at the top of the screen that you can use to navigate around the site. And also on the home page, we've created quick navigation buttons that take you to some of the key areas of the website fast. On our website, we offer the ability for people to subscribe. This offers 24 hour access. You can subscribe by clicking on the top right of the screen. This page offers you some more information on what the subscription offers as well as further information on the Visitor Safety Group. Those wishing to subscribe can do so by simply filling out their billing details, followed by proceed to PayPal. All payments are made through PayPal and can be done through an existing account or created as a customer to PayPal, which is a temporary account available. Members of ESG can sign in directly to the website by clicking the sign in option, which again can be found at the top right of the screen. A member should enter their username, which is their, either their email address or else the username that has been given to them. Enter the password and you have the option to select remember me or not. We recommend that all members change the password the first time they visit the website to something more memorable. The About Us section of the website lo offers lots of information on the visitor safety group, from what we do to members, board members, information on becoming a member, as well as our governance and constitution. By clicking on members, you will see that we display all of the logos of our members. The contact us option offers you the ability to find out quickly how to get in touch with the VSD secretariat or the chairperson. You also have the option to join our mailing list if you want to find out the latest information on upcoming events and webinars. The news section again can be accessed from the top right of the menu. You'll be able to find out the latest information on what's going on at VSD. You'll be able to click on options and find out about what's going on. For example, this introduces one of our newest board members. And principles, practice, and topic guidance are some of the key areas where you can find information on our website. You can use the left-hand navigation to find your way back and forward from pages. And we recommend using the breadcrumb trail located within each picture. You can also navigate using the buttons within the screen.
each page is packed full of content, as well as downloads, links to videos, and further information. The Law and Visitor Safety is another section of our website with a wealth of information. You can navigate through this section using the buttons on this page. For example, in civil law, you can see that the various topics each have their own link boxes. You can click on these and explore at your leisure. Within the law and visitor safety, we have also included a bespoke section on case law summaries. Here, you can search by categories, as well as through the search box, if you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. By clicking on read more, you'll be able to find out more about these summaries and read them for yourself. Case studies can be accessed from the menu at the top of the screen. You can see that this has also been categorized and you can search for case studies that you know the name of in the search option. Again, case studies are held here and are examples of work that has been done by our members. These cover a wide range of environments, projects and organisations. Simply click on read more and it will bring up the article. One of the fantastic new areas of our website is the event section. This is where you can find the latest information on upcoming workshops and webinars. It is also where you can find resources on webinars and events that have taken place. You can see here that there's a listing for a new event. Simply click on read more and it will bring up the event. You'll be able to book for the event from this page and later, as I'll explain, you'll be able to access the post-event resources and downloads. You can access information on past events on the left hand of the screen, or alternatively, you can access it from the top menu. In the past events section, you'll be able to find all of the post-event resources and downloads from workshops and webinars. By clicking on the past event, you'll be able to access downloads on the left hand side, as well as transcripts. This is from a recent webinar. You can find out information on the event that has taken place, and you'll also be able to access any recordings. By clicking on publications, you'll be able to find out about the latest publications available from the visitor safety group. You can click to purchase using the options available. You can download. The next area I would like to talk to you about is the forum. This can be accessed from the menu at the top of your screen next to news. Clicking on the forum, you will be given a range of options. If you have already got a Slack account and connected with the visitor safety group, please connect via the top button. If you have yet to get a Slack account or are looking to join with the Visitor Safety Group Slack channel, please use the invitation at the bottom. When you first sign in to Slack, you will need to enter your username and your password. Welcome to the Visitor Safety Group Slack channel. This forum really is what you make it. The idea behind this channel is to connect you with other members on an ongoing basis. We recommend you check this page regularly to find out what other discussions are taking place. We also encourage you to post any issues you're having that you would greatly value the advice of others on. You can see here that an access issue has been posted by Andrew Watson and other members have been responding. As you can see, the website is filled with pages of information. The best way to explore is to check it out for yourself. And so we welcome you when you receive your member login details to sign in and check the website out. We welcome feedback on the website.
And we also encourage you to share the website with others in your organization. If a member of your organization would like to be set up for a count, please email jane at outdoorrecreationni.com and we can arrange that for you. So enjoy. We look forward to hearing the feedback from our members. Great, Jane. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for that clear and, and comprehensive uh, presentation there. Um, and of course, you can you can take a chance to, to look back at that um, sort of tutorial video, really, of, of how to use the key features of the website uh, as, as you get into it. It's it's live now. Don't go there just yet. I have a few more things to say before we before we move on. But it is it, it is live now. So you can you can have a look at, at visitor safety dot dot group. Um, It'll take a wee while for the Google robot uh, to, to catch up with us. Um, it does actually appear on the, on the first page if you type in visitor safety group in, in, into Google. It certainly does on, on my page anyway. The old website uh, still reappears and over the course of today we'll, we'll get it that the old website points directly um, to, to the new one as well. So we won't have two websites live. So, um, so first of all, it'd be really remiss of me not to um, not to thank Jane um, for all her hard work in getting the site to where it is today. Um, an absolutely mammoth task uh, that she's taken on to get it from where it was when she got it to where it is now. So, so thank you very much, Jane, for your creative flair and, and painstaking attention to detail. As, as Jane said, like we, we really welcome feedback. The, 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 I think the site provides an excellent framework, but it's by no means perfect. There, we, we have tested it as much as we can. And there'll almost certainly be glitches. You may be viewing it on a different browser than we're viewing it on. You may you may find a link that doesn't work. Please help us out. We'll we'll, we'll not be will not be uh, annoyed at all if you send Jane a, a quick email saying this section doesn't quite work right. Um, you know maybe you could have a look at this. We'd really welcome it. So please help us as members uh, do that. Um, hopefully we're pretty close, but we we have inevitably missed a few glitches here or there. As as Ken said earlier, and I I would appeal to that as well. Is it you know, we're only the curators of the website. You're the experts who will help us provide that, that content. So again, we welcome new case studies, new topic guidance, case law summaries, et cetera, et cetera. News items you want to share with other members and of course, in, engage in that forum and, and, and share some share some ideas and share some solutions. So so as, as Ken said in his introduction, the framework's there. So let's, let's as members make, make, the, make the use of that as we go on. I should also say, you know, that, that Ken himself has performed a, 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 again, a, a huge editorial role really in, in, in getting the website uh, up and live. A lot of information has transferred from the old website and, and that needed edited and updated. And a lot of new information has gone onto the website as well. So again, another mammoth task from, from Ken to take that all on board. So, so Jane and Ken have certainly formed a, a very, very dynamic team and have put a lot of hours into that over, over the last couple of weeks and, and a couple of months. Um, as Jane said, um, the key contacts, um, so for 64 paid member organisations, there's a key contact for each of those organisations. Hopefully you, you, know, you know that's you. Um, those will be emailed. So today, each of those key contacts will be emailed um, with the username and password of how you get access to the website. That will also include the username and password for any other member of staff that we have the details for. So they may have attended a previous workshop or our webinar, for example. So, so we have preset those those username and login details. So please distribute those out amongst your team for us. Um, it means we get to send 64 emails rather than I think 360. Um, so you can distribute those out. It also allows you as the key contact to identify other, any other members of staff we haven't yet set up a profile for. Um, so I would encourage you again to respond to that email from Jane and say, I need X, Y and Z staff members added, please. Um, we'll work to get those username and passwords back to you as soon as possible. As, as you go into the website, um, before you sign in, you will notice a significant portion of the website is only accessible to you as the members. That's why it provides the benefits to members. So it's really important you get that username um, and password set up and, and let you explore to its full extent. Um, so thanks again to, to Jane, Jane and Ken. Um, in terms of moving forward, um, we're obviously, we, we like to have a, a forward look for, for webinars and, and, and workshops. Uh, as Ken said earlier, we, we, we 
we hope to return to, to physical workshops in, in the near future, hopefully as, as, as vaccines and, and things in general pr pr progress with the, with the pandemic. So we'll keep a watching brief on that and inform you of upcoming upcoming opportunities over, over the next couple of weeks. Um, as Ken also mentioned in his presentation, um, the, the board of nine, board, there's a board of nine members um, made, made up from the membership organisations which, um, which run the affairs of, of VSG. Um, there are four positions uh, coming up for renewal or currently available for, for renewal. Three of those will be for a three year stint and one of them will be for a, for a one year stint. Um, so there'll be an easing issued uh, later this week that will give an overview of, of the board's role and, and again appeal for expressions of interests um, from, from members. So, so if you feel you can, you can offer something to the board, that expression of interest would be would be really welcomed. You can have a look at the VSG website, that will give you an overview of, of what, what the board does and again I'll give you an overview of the current board members as, as well. Uh, any questions around board membership, don't hesitate to contact Ken directly and, and or, or Elizabeth directly in the Secretariat team. Again, contact details are available on the website. It's nice to be able to say that now. Um, so don't hesitate, don't hesitate to get in touch. I think that that wraps up all the, the housekeeping for today. So you'll receive um, an easing of the outworkings of, of today's webinar. You'll receive key contacts, you'll receive an email from Jane with your username and, and login details, and you'll receive information later this week around the, the board member recruitment. So thanks again. It was great to see so many people stayed, stayed online with us all, all the way through that, and we look forward to delivering future webinars and, a, and, and hopefully <laughs> physical events in the not too distant future. So thanks all. Enjoy the website. Send us more information from it and send us plenty of feedback. Cheers now. Bye bye.